It's time for the Mayor's Cup between the Missouri Tigers and the South Carolina Gamecocks. Can Shane Beamer and the Gamecocks get some long away revenge against Eli Drinkwitz and the Tigers? Or will Mizzou continue to roll like they have so far this season? You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Gamecock Nation. Tiger Nation, welcome to this special crossover edition of the Locked On Gamecocks and the Locked On Mizzou podcast, where we cover your respective team every single day. I'm Andrew Lyon, the host of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, and I'm pleased to be joined by the host of the Locked On Mizzou podcast, John Miller, to discuss the battle for the Mayor's Cup that's taking place this Saturday afternoon between the South Carolina Gamecocks and the Missouri Tigers. John, how are things going, my friend? Well, things are going well. I'm busy as a one-arm paper hanger off the field, but on the field, lots of good Missouri football so far. Plenty of excitement. Yeah, and of course, John, we're already halfway through the 2023 football season. I think that you and I can both agree that whether our seasons were going good or bad, it's always nice to be able to say that we've got college football games coming up on Saturday. And this has been a close one between both these teams for several years now. So who knows? We could be in for another close battle on Saturday. But John, before we get into today's show, I want to let everyone know that's listening or watching the show that this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. John, the thing that sticks out to me when I originally look at this matchup is the star power that both of these teams' offenses have. We might be seeing two of the best quarterback wide receiver duos in all of college football taking the field on Saturday afternoon. For South Carolina, of course, you got Spencer Rattler and wide receiver Xavier Leggett. And then for the Tigers, you got quarterback Brady Cook and wide receiver Luther Burden the third who've just been lighting teams up so far this season. Both of these duos have. But, John, I want to ask you specifically about Brady Cook. This is a guy that you've been backing for a very long time now on your show. When I put you on the spot back in the summer and said, who's going to be the starter this year? You said you thought it was going to be Brady Cook, and you thought that last year maybe he had an injury that sort of held him back from realizing his full potential. And so far this season, that definitely seems like it has been the case. Yeah, for sure. I I just think Brady Cook, number one, obviously he did have a serious labrum injury last year in week two that he was able to gut through, play through for the rest of the season. I think it was pretty clear that that limited him to some extent. It definitely did at the time of the injury. Impressive that he was able to play through that. I think a lot of it, though, one season under his belt as a starter, learning how to just manage through a season, be the leader of the team. I think experience at that position means everything. I just talked to Brian Smith, my previous episode about this very topic. And to be honest, I think that's the biggest difference because I don't notice a gigantic difference in say Brady Cook's arm strength. I think he worked on his mechanics a lot this summer after he recovered from his injury, of course, and I'm sure that's helped a lot. What I'm seeing on film is just a guy who's throwing the ball with more anticipation and more confidence. I just think he's processing things much more quickly than he did last season. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, when you look at both of these quarterbacks, you could say that both of these guys had taken significant strides. For South Carolina side, things with Spencer Rattler, he didn't necessarily have an injury that sort of held him back in the 2022 season, but as Gamecock fans would be quick to tell you, um, There was questionable play calling, questionable coaching, questionable management overall with this offense, a lot of comprehensive verbiage, a lot of personnel packages, basically just seemed like the playbook was a bit too deep for a college football team. Dow Loggins has come in and he's changed all that. He's sort of streamlined this offense. And Spencer Rattler, he's also worked really hard to try and improve in certain areas. He's much better with his pocket navigation. That was something that when he got to Columbia, he struggled mightily in, not knowing sort of when it's time to leave the pocket, not knowing how to work his way up in the pocket. He's gotten much better at all that. He's gotten better at trusting that everything around him is going to work out. Even though at 
plenty of junctures so far this season. That hasn't always been the case with his offensive line and a lack of a run game and uh, wide receiver court that the last couple weeks has had some trouble getting some separation. So Spencer Rattler, he has been the show for South Carolina on offense, and he's had a great wide receiver to throw to as well in Xavier Leggett, a guy that coming into this season I think had around 400 or so career receiving yards in the past four seasons combined. And this year, Xavier Leggett, he actually just, it was just announced that he is a midseason second team All-American, I believe, according to the Associated Press and their voting system. So Xavier Leggett has been a big time part of this offense. And I know that Luther Burden has been a big time piece for the Missouri Tigers offense. What all has happened with him this offseason? What changes have you seen that sort of allowed Luther Burden to take that next step as a superstar wide receiver for the Tigers? Well, like with Brady Cook, experience matters a lot at that position too. Burden, excuse me, just a, a true freshman last season for the Tigers. But what you have seen is he's changed his role a lot this season. He was an outside receiver last season. A lot of times when they'd throw the ball down the field to him, it was a lot of sort of jump ball, boundary type throws that wasn't necessarily the best use of his skill sets. Now what you're seeing with his move into the slot, you're seeing a guy who is not really your traditional slot ride wide receiver. You know, don't think of Wes Welker or or somebody like that. Think of somebody who's more explosive and can do a ton of damage with yards after the catch. That's who Luther Burden has been so far this season. And I, I'd say he's been as good a receiver as there's been in the country. I'm actually curious from, from your perspective, what's been the difference between this version of Xavier Leggett and the previous version? Well, John, the, the biggest change that I've noticed this season is that Xavier Leggett has become a receiver that has reliable hands that you could just, like you kind of mentioned with jump balls to Luther Burden, Xavier Leggett's kind of the opposite. He plays outside near the boundary, near the sideline, and he's a guy that, you know, Spencer Rattler, he's got full confidence in just kind of throwing up a wing and a prayer or a 50-50 ball at times and just letting his guy go up there and get it. And in the past, Xavier Leggett was a receiver that struggled even just making the simplest of catches, but he worked really hard on that this offseason. According to wide receivers coach Justin Stepp from South Carolina, he spent a ton of time getting extra work after practices on the football field this past offseason. And all that has sort of culminated into Xavier Leggett just finally seeing the light come on and putting it all together. And I think that the thing that some fans forget, John, is that, you know, sometimes, you know, I get that these guys come in, they have a ton of hype, kind of like a Luther Burden was a five-star prospect. Xavier Leggett was a four-star prospect from the state of South Carolina, but it doesn't just always click immediately for one reason or another. Sometimes it takes a while for these guys to just get adjusted. And so it is great to see sort of the stories that are unfolding with both of these guys who are for sure going to be playing on Sundays, I think, for a very, very long time once their playing days are over at the collegiate level. But while things have been going pretty good for both of these teams' offenses, admittedly, both of these teams' defenses have left a little bit to be desired. What all has happened regarding the unit for South Carolina and for the Tigers as well? John and I are going to dive into that in just a few moments right here on Locked On Gamecocks and Locked On Mizzou. Today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the number one daily fantasy sports app because it is the easiest and simplest fantasy sports app out there. All you got to do is just pick anywhere from two to six athletes in their respective sport and Choose for them to go more than or less than their projected stats for their upcoming game or match. John, the Detroit Lions are the biggest feel-good story in the entire NFL and now look like a legitimate Super Bowl contender because of Jared Goff. And Price Picks has set his projected stats at 243.5 passing yards for their upcoming matchup against the Baltimore Ravens. I think that Jared Goff's going to throw for more than 243.5 passing yards against that Ravens defense. What do you think? I think I'll endorse your selection. I think, if anything, golf is still a little bit underrated by the public. Absolutely agree with you on that. If you think that Jared Goff is going to throw for more than 243 and a half passing yards, or maybe there's another player that you want to go and take a look at, go to prizepicks.com slash college and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash college and promo code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. 
Welcome back to this Thursday crossover edition between the Locked On Gamecocks and the Locked On Mizzou podcast, where we cover your respective team every single day. And as always, from both John and I, a big thank you to each and every one of you everydayers who stick by us and make our podcast your daily watch on YouTube or your daily listen wherever you get your podcasts. John, let's talk about defense now for both of these football teams, because as fun as it's been to talk about the offense and see what our quarterbacks and wide receivers have done for these teams, um, that hasn't exactly been the case with both our defenses. I know that Missouri last year, they were kind of one of the bigger surprises in the SEC, took some massive steps forward under new defensive coordinator Blake Baker, a team that became known for how aggressive they were and their ability to get after the quarterback, the sky splits and all that good stuff. But this year kind of seems like that the Missouri Tiger defense has taken a bit of a step back in certain aspects. Would you agree with that? And if so, why has that been the case? Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt that at least so far, first half of the season, Missouri hasn't been quite as good defensively as last season, which is a bit of a surprise to me. Missouri certainly had some question marks, especially at edge rusher. Perhaps we haven't replaced Isaiah McGuire yet, for example, but I actually think for the most part, the edge rushers have been okay. Maybe not quite as good as last year. I'll give you that. But I think a lot of it's just been, well, number one, I don't think the Missouri defense has been as aggressive as it was last season. On the other hand, I think Missouri's given up a lot of big plays that really have just been matters of busted coverages, miscommunications, that sort of thing. So For whatever reason, if it's because perhaps Missouri's defense is putting a little bit more on these guys' plate here, an experienced group of of starters without a doubt. So I think Missouri's tried to maybe mix it up a little more from what they did last season, which especially against South Carolina and a lot of their games, Missouri played a lot of press man coverage and kind of dared you to beat them over the top, blitzed, brought six or seven in pressure a lot of times and I think that worked very well against South Carolina last year as we saw I'm curious to see if that works again or if indeed Missouri even tries that plan because I just haven't seen quite as much of that single high type man safe man press man coverage I want to ask you something Andrew since Xavier Leggett typically on the outside does how South Carolina have any tight ends, any slot type players that can exploit Missouri seeming weaknesses in coverage at linebacker and safety? Well, there's a couple guys, John, that I can't point to. I think the first player that comes to mind is tight end Troy Knox, a transfer from Arkansas that the game Cox got in the portal this past off season. Now, Trey Knox is not going to blow you away necessarily with his ability to like, you know, catch a pass three yards down the field and take it for 25 plus. He's not that kind of tight end, but he has been a guy that's been very reliable, is sort of someone that understands sort of how to get open in the shorter areas of the field. Spencer Rattler has done a great job of finding him the past couple weeks, and he's really become sort of that safety blanket, that safety valve that South Carolina fans kind of hoped that he would be when he announced he was coming to Columbia back in in December of this past offseason. Joshua Simon, his backup, is another guy that could potentially make an impact in this football game. He kind of hasn't maybe got as many opportunities as Trey Knox up until the last couple of games South Carolina's played, and he hasn't made maybe a ton of plays, but that's kind of because, in my opinion, again, he just hasn't gotten the chance to. But he had a big-time 33-yard catch-and-run against Florida this past week where he absolutely trucked a Florida defensive back on his way to the end zone. So he's a guy that's a bit more of a balanced tight end, can also help out in the run game as a blocker. And then in the slot, Amorian Brown is a guy that could also make an impact. Now, granted, Brown, he has been dealing with a hamstring injury so far this season. So I'm not sure if maybe that still is lingering a touch. I don't think it is at this point because South Carolina had their bye week two weekends ago, which gave him extra time to, I think, sort of rest and recover. But haven't seen really Amari Brown make that big of an impact since the Furman game or North Carolina games where he showed that, you know, he added some hesitation moves to his game when it came to running after the catch. Uh, this season. So the Gamecocks, I think, have a couple of offensive weapons, but not necessarily guys that are absolute game breakers really outside of Xavier Leggett, admittedly. 
Interesting. Yeah, I just wondered if maybe South Carolina ever moved Leggett around or if he specifically is a boundary guy. Because again, if they can get him on a safety at any point, that that's the big worry for Missouri. I think uh, part of your point last year, I think Tennessee actually kind of showed how uh, kind of showed how to break that Missouri defense a little bit. If you can just give your if you can give your quarterback enough time to get the matchup he wants on one of those safeties, if you have a, a good enough receiver core, a deep enough receiver core to take advantage, I think that's one of the main points. Yeah, then Missouri could be in trouble. Yeah, and for South Carolina, that has been sort of the biggest thing this season in terms of the offenses. Can you give Spencer Rattler some help? And that was both the case with the offensive line protecting him in the passing game and also the running game. Now, the good news for South Carolina's offense has been that their running game has made some strides the past few weeks. It kind of showed some life against Mississippi State because of a uh, switch in terms of the, who the starter was. Mario Anderson Jr. will be the running back for Tiger fans to look out for. He is a guy that is shorter, but he's stocky, and he runs angry. He does not go down in first contact very easily. I believe he recorded over 100 yards against Tennessee, and he also recorded almost 100 yards again against the Florida Gators just purely on the ground this past weekend. So he's a guy that this team is going to have to rely on because offensive line-wise, while that unit's been getting better, the Gamecocks, uh, they might be missing one of their key starters up front in right tackle for Sean Lee. He was moved there this past week, but for Sean Lee, he's one of the leaders of that unit, one of the most experienced guys, and in my opinion, has been one of the few bright spots really up front consistently this year. And he is doubtful right now with a lower body injury. So if he can't go, I can tell you, John, uh, the drop-off will be noticeable for South Carolina. And I know that the Tigers got guys like Johnny Miller on the edge that can get after the quarterback uh, because of the technique that they use and their athleticism. So for South Carolina's offense, they're definitely going to probably have to make some adjustments because of that. Defensively speaking, John, I worry a great deal about uh, the matchup for South Carolina against Luther Burden because if you've watched South Carolina's defense or you've maybe seen glimpses the past few weeks, you've probably seen a slot receiver of some kind do a lot of damage against this defense because this defensive coaching staff, for whatever reason the past few weeks, has decided that they're going to play three safeties basically on the field at once and put one of them in the nickel corner spot in Nick Emmonworry. Nick Emmerich is a good player. He's going to be playing in the NFL one day. He was a freshman All-American in safety last year. But that doesn't automatically mean that those kind of guys can just play anywhere in the secondary and be just as good. They've been fighting out the hard way the past few weeks. Now, part of that's been because of injury. A couple guys getting dinged up there. But last weekend, I really don't know at this point why they've continued to do this. Ricky Pierce saw... At one point, he just started getting open pretty much every other play. He ended up with over 160 receiving yards in this past weekend's game when South Carolina played the Florida Gators. So if the Gamecocks even dare try to do the same thing against Luther Burden, I made the joke, but I also kind of wasn't joking after the Florida game, that if they do that against Luther Burden, the Tigers might as well open up the record books offensively and possibly put in a line and a potential number for him after Saturday's game because I I know Luther Burden's a great player. The question is, is South Carolina's defensive coaching staff going to finally make some adjustments in order to try and at least, you know, maybe slow him down as best you can. I don't think you can stop Luther Burden, but if you can't at least slow him down, it's going to be a long day for South Carolina on the defensive side of the ball. No question about that. So with how many close games we've seen in this series over the past several years, who did John, I think, can win this football game? Will the Missouri Tigers take down another SEC East foe, or can the Gamecocks get back on the right track? We're going to dive into our final predictions for this game in just a couple of moments. Today's show was also brought to you by Jace Medical. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected, and that's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you a peace of mind so that you are not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure that you have the medication in hand. Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using code LOCKEDON at checkout 
on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com, promo code locked on. Welcome back to today's crossover edition between the Locked On Gamecocks and the Locked On Mizzou podcast, where we cover your teams every single day in just 30 minutes. All righty, John, it's time to get into our final predictions for this edition of the Mayor's Cup, the Battle of the Mayor's Cup. What do you think is going to happen in this football game between the South Carolina Gamecocks and the Missouri Tigers? Well, for for those of you on YouTube, I'm I'm kind of chuckling right now because it just occurred to me that I cannot name the mayor of my own town, Columbia, Missouri, even though we have something <laughs> called the Mayor's Cup. Can you do? How about Mayor of South Carolina? I'm going to put you on on the spot right now. Go. I know the last name's Rickerman. That's all I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. We are on brand. We are the sports guys here. I love it. I love it so much. But you know what? When it comes to this this Mayor's Cup, this Missouri-South Carolina football game, I, I, I'm kind of thinking it's going to be a little bit less high scoring than people are predicting. I think a lot of people underestimate Columbia, Missouri for row field as a home crowd when Missouri is actually good and rocking. And frankly, it, it, it's been a while since the post Gary Pinkle era where you could truly say it. And again, Missouri lost to LSU. It wasn't because the fans weren't into it. I, I just think it's going to be harder for South Carolina to score than maybe people think. And also, you know, Missouri's not going to score 35, 40 points every single week either. I do have Missouri winning this football game, but something more like 31 to 20, something like that, I'm thinking. I, I hope it's that comfortable, honestly, because even though Missouri obviously a seven-point favorite here over at FanDuel Sportsbook, I, I'm not looking past South Carolina whatsoever. Yeah, John, for the way I look at this football game, I sort of look at this as a game where it's all about the matchups, right? So for South Carolina's offense, I do think that because of Spencer Rattler and what he's done this year, and also, you know, if they really get maybe some of these supporting cast members that they do have at certain offensive skill positions, I think that South Carolina can score some points against Missouri. I don't think that's going to be like last year where South Carolina's offense quite frankly just looked like they didn't know what to do after about the first couple of drives of the football game. So I think that the Gamecocks are going to have some opportunities on that side of the ball. But defensively, I just worry about this matchup for the Gamecocks, schematically speaking. I don't like the fact that when I watch Missouri's offense, I see a lot of horizontal and vertical play action concepts that they use. The Gamecocks have struggled mightily defending the play action the past few weeks, especially against Mississippi State, who ran a lot of vertical play action, and Florida, who runs a lot of horizontal play action concepts. Because South Carolina's linebackers, quite frankly, they're just not good enough going sideline to sideline, trying to chase down any running backs or tailbacks, excuse me, any running backs or tight ends that are being used in the play action game. I also know that Missouri likes to use a lot of motion to try to get themselves the right matchup or maybe see just what South Carolina's doing in terms of coverage. And South Carolina also dealt with that against Florida. And, and you know, I kind of made the argument on my Wednesday show, John, that that could be a good thing for South Carolina because you've seen some of these things already this year from plenty of different opponents. But if you haven't made the pride adjustments, it's not going to matter if you've already seen it. And admittedly, I kind of feel like that's just the way this game is going to play out. So I think Missouri is going to win. I think they're going to cover that spread set by the FanDuel odds makers. I think Missouri is going to win this contest 38-24 over South Carolina. And um, again, I just think that if South Carolina is going to win this game, it would have to be in a shootout format. Spencer Rell would have to have a phenomenal football game. And because of how important also it is to have home field advantage this year in the SEC, with Missouri having that on top of all of this, I just don't think that South Carolina is going to find a way to pull it out at the end of the day. I, I feel similarly to you do, uh, without a doubt. I, I also think Missouri really is yet to play its A football game this year. But on the other hand, part of the reason for that is they have been a little bit penalty prone to penalties, prone to just bad snaps at certain bad times, you know, stalling out on drives, which is shooting themselves in the foot a little bit. And well, I can't resist this. Frank Bieber knows something about shooting himself in the foot, doesn't he? But um, ching, thank you very much. Tip your waiters. But uh, seriously, all bad jokes aside, I, I just I agree with your your analysis of the matchup. And honestly, back to back to Shane Beamer. 
I think in year two here, sure, easy to make fun of the guy right now. This is kind of a low point. He literally accidentally broke his foot because he was so frustrated. In this offseason, I really saw a lot of parallels between the year two for Eli Drinkwitz and Shane Beamer. Because if you remember, after 2020, Drinkwitz went five and five, kind of surprisingly went ahead of the expectations in the COVID season, all SEC. Then Missouri kind of fell back a little bit in 2021. 22 was better, still not quite the breakthrough. Now it seems like Missouri really is having a true breakthrough in year four. So it's just a reminder for all you Gamecocks fans out there. I don't know if Shane Beamer is ultimately the guy or not, but let's not bail on him halfway through season two. I mean, Florida fans were ready to bail on Billy Napier after like a month, it felt like. So I just think that's one thing in this conference I've noticed. I know college football fans are impatient everywhere, but the SEC, it truly does mean even more college coaches being on the hot seat. Yeah, no, without without a doubt, John, I completely agree with your sentiments on all of that. Shane Beamer, uh, it, it is still a building process here at South Carolina, and I, I've been telling people on my end, I think that you know 2025 is probably the year that you can expect maybe him to finally have that breakthrough, maybe kind of like Eli Drinkwitz has had so far in the 2023 season. Either way you slice it, it's sure to be one fun matchup between the Gamecocks and the Tigers. John, appreciate you coming on to this crossover show, and it's always great talking to you. For all of you Gamecock and Missouri Tiger fans, if you are a Gamecock fan, you want to listen or watch some of John Miller's content, be sure to go check out Locked On Mizzou on YouTube, wherever you get your audio podcasts. Also, give him a follow at Locked On Mizzou on Twitter. That's M-I-Z-Z-O-U. For all you Mizzou Tiger fans, if you want to check out what I've been saying about this matchup, go check out the Locked On Gamecocks podcast on YouTube, wherever you get your audio podcasts. And you can follow me on Twitter at a lion underscore SC. And by the way, the line is spelled L-Y-O-N, just like the animal, but spelled differently. John, thank you once again for coming on. Y'all have a great rest of your day, and we'll be sure to catch y'all on our next shows on the Locked On Gamecocks and the Locked On Mizzou podcast. <laughs>